सहनो भुन सह वीर तेजस्वीतमस्त मिद्विषा वह शांति 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 रश थ्रू I will try to explain uh, them a bit more in detail. I hope it's okay. I had just uh, uh, posted a couple of slides for this as new material for this set, but we will cover most of the material from last week. I hope everyone is okay with that. Um, we started with saying that Swami had uh, it was an excerpt from a 1980 Dashara discourse, where Swami is talking about. the om karam and um, what it represents it represents the uh, divinity which we perceive in the waking state as vishwa uh, the the god who is the indweller in everything in this world uh, and makes all the gross creation function and that's swami calls it vishwa the vishwa is also known as vaishwanara or vishnu also the second one is when we are in the dream when we are sleeping in our dream state the same divinity is present as taijasa or tejas um that is the one which allows us to even live a dream life in our dream state Uh, we everything is created in that and that too is divinity which is present and which is uh, uh, which reveals itself in that state this that is um, designated by the ukara the u in the om there is a u m the akara is the gross world it represent the vishwa or vaishwanara the ukara the u sound designates the uh, te- tejas or taijasa which is visible to us in our dream state the third one is makara m mm, which swami says is pragna is the consciousness which is present even when our deep sleep we do not we are not aware of it when our deep sleep but it is present and we when we awake we realize that we had a deep sleep so that means the consciousness was there and the consciousness is again up so that is pragna and then swami is about that which transcends all of them which is a turiya state turiya means fourth um swami gives the name adhiratha uh that sound is unheard it is not struck it is not un, it is unmanifest but that's an undercurrent in in our life in everything that we see so this was the description and um, this is a shabda brahman as swami calls and so we looked at um um various um 
examples of this principle being uh, presented in various Upanishads and other material which I have put together. Uh, I have picked up Mandukya Upanishad, which is one of the shortest Upanishads. I have taken an excerpt of Swami's writing on it in the Upanishad of Vahini. And um, basically it says this uh, Mandukya Upanishad is the chief among all Upanishads. And um, the Pranava, the Omkaram is explained thoroughly. And that's what Swami says. And um, uh, you can read it. I don't think I need to explain further. This is not a study of the Mandukya Upanishad, but I'm just giving glimpses of uh, principles which Swami has expounded and also gives you an exposure. Uh, you may wonder, you know, are we learning Sanskrit? But the whole idea is to provide exposure to Sanskrit texts and Sanskrit words which Swami has used. And um, so it's an opportunity for us to read it in Sanskrit. Like in this case, um, Mandukya Upanishad, um, we are able to read it in Sanskrit. And uh, so that way, you know, the familiarity and the exposure will improve and increase. And that should help us whenever we study any subject which Swami is talking about. Um, so I had taken, because Swami has mentioned it is explained. And Swami is, of course, explaining it in the Upanishad of Aini in greater detail, uh, to some detail. But I think Swami points this out so that we can go and uh, do a study ourselves and try to do extra research to understand what Swami is telling, so that we understand what Swami has said in its entirety. That's the idea. So I have taken a verse, um, one of the mantras, one or two mantras from Mandukya Upanishad. I will quickly read them. So it's Mandukya Upanishad. Mandukya Upanishad. So this is ukyo, okay? It's a compound consonant, uk, ya, and o makes it q, okay? I thought I would just point it out. O mitye the o mitye the dakshara midam. O mi itye the dakshara midam. Om Ityeda Daksharam Idam Sarvam Sarvam Tasyopa Vyakyanam Tasyopa Vyakyanam Bhutam Bhutam Bhavat Bhavishya Diti Bhavat Bhavishya Diti Sarva Mongkara Eva Sarva Mongkara Eva Yachanya Tri Kala Titham Yachanya Tri Kala Titham Tadapyongkara eva. Tadapyongkara eva. So that is the uh, uh, mantra, the first mantra in the Mandukya Upanishad. There are 12 mantras, the first one. Um, I broke it down into individual words. I'll quickly run through them if it's okay. Om, which is Om. Iti etat, this aksharam. The letter is which I put that, but that which cannot be destroyed does get destroyed. Idam, this, which means creation. Sarvam. So all this creation, this creation, you know, we talked about this and that concept. Whatever we see is this. That means tat. That means divinity, which is not present in the visible. This is vyak, vyakta means that which is manifest. That is unmanifest, which is not in front of us. So this idam is this creation. Idam sarvam, all this creation is om. That's what uh, 
Montague Upanishad says. Tasya upavyakyanam. Tasya means that of that. Upavyakyanam, explanation. What is this explanation of this Om? Is Bhutam means past. Bhavat, what is present in front of us? Bhavish, bhavishyat. Bhavishyat means what can happen in the future. Okay, what will be in the future? So there is future. Iti Satam, Omkara Eva. All this is Omkara. What was past, what is present, and what is future, all this is Omkara. Omkara alone. Indeed, it is Omkara. Yacha Anyat, whatever else is beyond this, outside of this, Anyat, other than this, Trikala Atitam, which is beyond these three Kalas which we have already mentioned, Bhuta, Bhavat, Bhavishyat. These are the three Kalas, past, present, and future. That which is beyond that, Tat Api, that also Omkara Eva. That is also Omkara because that's the fourth thing. So that's what it starts. Whatever we see, past, present, and future, is Omkara. That which is beyond that time, which is Kala Atita, that is Trikala Atita, is also Om. So that's what the first mantra says. So that means everything that we encounter in this world, or do not encounter, all that is Om. Sairam, brother, can you go back the last part of that? Yes. Yach Anyata Kala Kalatit. Can you just pronounce and okay. go over that, please? Sure. Yacha. Okay, here there are two um, words. Yacha. Through Sandhi, it becomes Yacha. Okay, the it becomes itch. So you pronounce it as yacha. Okay. Then the anyat is also added to that. So the cha and a, a becomes cha. So it becomes yachanyat. Yachanyat. Then trikala is added. So yachanyat trikala. Yachanya Trikala. Then Trikala and Atitam are brought together so that La becomes La. So if I add all of them, Yachanya Trikala Atitam, which is this word. Yachanya Trikala Atitam. I hope. Yachanya Trikala Atitam. The next one is. Tat api, this it becomes id, the third letter in the third varga. It's a sandhi rule. So, because it is hard consonant, id is a soft consonant. So, when the hard consonant comes in connection with the swara or vowel, it becomes softer. So, that's how tadapi. So, this tat plus api becomes. The P. Then this E and O becomes Upyo. E and O become Yo. So in this case, Up is there. So it becomes Upyo. So Pyo. Okay. Tada Pyo Kara Eva. Tada Pyo Kara Eva. So that's what is here. I hope that's uh, okay, sister. Sairam, thank you, brother. Thank you. Now it's better. So we will go to the second uh, mantra in the Mandukya Upanishad. Sarvam Hita Brahma. Yamatma Sarvam He the Brahma Yamatma He the Brahma Yamatma 
ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಯ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೋಯ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಸೋಯ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಚತುಷ್ಪಾತ್ ಸರ್ವಂ ಹೇತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಯ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೋಯ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಚತುಷ್ಪಾತ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ he means indeed certainly etat this tat means that etat means this okay that's in sanskrit uh, tat re- refers to tat is there what is unmanifest what the lord etat means this what is in front of us so people also will say saha means he Eshah means any person in front of you, this person. That person is Saha. This person is Eshah. Okay, so uh, just uh, digression, but Etat means this. Brahma means Brahman. Ayam means this. Okay. All in the, all this is indeed Brahman. Initially they say oh, everything is Omkara. now the statement says all that we see is brahman okay idam and etat are more or less the same i am that is also uh, this so these three words are used i am means it also means this means this individual okay it's when you etat means it's something uh, but a person when you refer to is i am okay or this you can say i am atma means atman is brahman so this atman is also brahman so the atman which is present in this created world is also brahman is the statement is i have colored it in blue because it is one of the four mahavakyas in the upanishads Uh, you have you may know tattva masi brahma asmi ayam atma brahma prajnanam brahma these are the four mahavakyas i think we have covered it in one of the sessions earlier sessions but this ayam atma brahma appears in the mandukya upanishad which is part of the uh, atharvana veda okay the fourth veda saha in this way i have put the word that okay i is this saha is that can be i am is this person also saha is that person okay saha i am this atma is chatushpad is four parts it contains four parts so saha plus ayam that one and this one all of them have four parts uh, because both are same anyway ayam atma already we have said okay um so that is the meaning of this so sarvam hetat brahma ayam atma so there is some sandhi sarvam hi sarvam hi and a that becomes e and a becomes a so it becomes hetat hetat then this it when it comes to sandhi with ib it changes into id just we saw before also the first hard consonant turns into a soft consonant so the third letter in the tha varga which is the is used so it's etad bram sarvam hi ketat brahma okay this ma has a at the end and a here the next letter next word so both of them when they come together it becomes brahmayam brahmayam that's what you are saying that um plus a becomes ma so brahmayam atma so all these words are put together in this 
in this uh, can compound word ketad brahmaya matma ketad brahmaya matma ketad brahmaya matma brahma soya matma so it is saha and i am become soyam because this visarga these two dots which like say colon um it changes into o and this a uh, uh, is put as a silent a uh, and it is depicted with this avagraha which is written like an s okay so it is actually not pronounced okay it's silent so so yam i don't know whether you know saha saha plus aham becomes soham so i think i have touched it earlier on so it's the same principle of sandhi so yam um plus a becomes ma so so yam atma that's the way it's written so yam atma means there are three words put together into one compound word called samas okay chatushpat chatushpat means chatu means four path means there are multiple meanings feet uh, but i have chosen the word parts here because that seems to be more appropriate to communicate the idea okay so this brahman has four parts and the four parts we already saw akara ukara makara uh, um, and the silence and the, what are these four parts various aspects of this four parts is explained in the other mantras which we looked at mandukya upanishad again uh, which is the ninth mantra you know, there are 12 mantras i said that say ninth upanishad is only 12 mantras i think i may have mentioned last week in mukti upanishad shri hanuman is supposed to be asking shri rama uh, what should i study you know what is you know about vedanta they were discussing what can i study to liberate myself and rama is supposed to say just study mandukya upanishad you will be uh, liberated you know that's what he said mandukya meva um, i haven't put that here but within it's another slight digression about mandukya upanishad but in the mukti upanishad shri rama is telling hanuman that study this and you will you will liberate yourself so the ninth mantra is uh, we are looking at jagaritasthano jagaritasthano vaishvanaro karah vaishvanaro karah prathama मात्रा आप तेरा दी आप तेरा दी मत द्वादा आप तेरा दी मत द्वादा आ उपनोति आपनोति हवाई सर्वान kamanadischa sarvan kamanadischa sarvan kamanadischa bhavati ya evam veda jagarita sthano vaishvanaro kara prathama matra apte radi matva dva apnoti havai sarvan kamanadischa bhavati ya evam veda we we'll look at each word jagaritasthano jagaritasthano jagarati means to be awake okay that sthana that position or that state so one who is in the waking state 
one who is awake is always called jagarita sthana one who is in the state of being awake who aware one who is aware in the physical of the physical world vaishwanarah vaishwanarah means this no translation it's vishwa one who is pervading everything vaishwanarah is the fire in all this entire universe vishwa and i think if anyone is reading uh, i think a few of you are studying vishnu sahasranama vishwam you know vishnu vashat karam i think that's the way it starts which is basically this vishnu is the vishwam this entire creation so he is present as vaishwanara akara this a uh, sound okay akara prathama which is the first prathama is first matra is syllable or i think that's the best way to put it for a beat or a count you can also say but in this case let's use the word syllable apte apte means pervaded it pervades everything okay it's present everywhere which obtained also you can say but in this case meaning is is present you can find it everywhere okay adi matva adi means original the beginning so it adi matva adi mat means that is the essence of origin itself on account of it being or the origin okay adi means origin adi mat means the state of being origin swat means because of that okay adi matvat va means in this case i would say and or or you can say va is and in this case apnoti obtains it is a verb okay present tense word apnoti i think we may have looked at some present tense verb like gachati bhavati whatever ends in t is a singular present verb okay for uh, plural it becomes inti apno okay so in this case it's a bit complicated because apno vanti it becomes i don't want to go into technical details but apnoti is singular verb okay apnoti means you receive obtain you can be obtain you will obtain or he in this case saha apno then he will receive or he will obtain that's what it means because it's for the third person okay her by means verily definitely sarvan means all okay in sarvam itself is all sarvan means plural of sarvam okay kaman desires all the desires adihi first and cha is and bhavati remains yaha means whoever evam thus or this way that knows so what it means is jagrit san so in the one in the akara symbolizes the vaishwanara divinity which is present in this entire world and it's manifest in the jagarita sthana in the waking state okay and this akara is the first syllable which pervades everything because of which everything has pervaded also and that is pervading in everything because it was the origin of creation itself i is the origin all entire creation is held in this a because of that whoever knows this will obtain all that they desire okay so that is the meaning uh, i think it is similar to omkaram bindu samyuktam nityam dhyayanti yogina we looked at the sloka kamadam 
means what that which gives us all desires so if we can see the divinity in everything in this world we can perceive the lord in everything we were, see in this world naturally because of that whatever we desire will be granted to us because this a which is the part uh, force of creation is present in everything and so when we chant om when we chant the first when we start we should think this lord which is present in me is manifesting as this akara okay that's the way, uh, that's why when we chant om if we imagine there is an unmanifest divinity in us and that is coming into being through this a so it fills our entire person uh, that is the meditation so that is what it is so once we uh, see that life whatever we wish for will be attained that's what as uh, this mantra says in bantu preparation then we'll go to the next one this is the 10th mantra in the mandok upanishad swapna sthana staijasa swapna sthana staijasa ukaro dvitiya matrotkarsha tubha yatva bodka irshati matrot karshadubaya twadvo karshasti okay we'll look at the individual words and try to combine them hawai jnana santatim samanascha bhavati nasya brahma vidkule nasya brahma vidkule bhavati ya evam veda we we'll look at individual words swapna sthana just the way jagarita sthana is the first one in this case it's swapna jagarita and swapna swapna is the dream sthana in that state one who is in the dream state is swapna sthana taijasaha tejas the name is taijasaha means from tejas one who is embodying the, the of embodiment of tejas is taijasa so in the dream state the one in the dream state is taijasaha ukara is the u sound dvitiya second okay prathama first dvitiya is second matra syllable utkarshat rising okay utkarshat means it rises so raises also you can say ubhayatvat ubhaya means two okay ubhaya means two pair all of them is ubhaya so on account of bhaitaksha because it is the middle it can go this way or that way the utkarsha can go this way which is towards ma or towards a towards a creation or towards a dissolution so it's in the middle okay and because it is rises utkarsha utkarshati it rises how i verily jnana so jnana is wisdom santatim in some places they will say santati means your children and everyone i have used the meaning expansion samanah equal cha is and bhavati okay so because this second one is utkarshati second syllable rises up meditating on that or chanting that or it makes the wisdom rise and expand and it becomes equal okay 
samadhi swami says samadhi means that which is composed state of equilibrium the equilibrium is not possible until you rise okay when you rise the wisdom rises when the wisdom is as a reason then one can attain the state of equanimity equilibrium so that is possible only through the rising so the wisdom will rise and it will expand uh, santati there are people who say if you chant this all your children's knowledge also will go up that's also an interpretation uh, you, your santati all your people who are born to you and you know who come after your, your lineage will have wisdom that is also a meaning which many people have interpreted but i have say i have used the word you are whoever is doing this meditation prayer their wisdom will expand okay i guess naturally through exposure others also will benefit but um, that's the meaning of this okay na okay cha bhavati i mean he will be remains is the word i have used here bhavati means he will be or is okay the next one is na asya becomes nasya okay here na plus a becomes nasya i think there's some more sandhis i will look at them maybe i will go back and look at them once i finish the meaning nasya ab brahma vit kule a brahma vit kule there are multiple words here i have not broken them let's th- take the word brahma which is here brahma means divine, divine god brahma vit if you try take this brahma vit means one who knows brahman is brahma vit there is a very famous uh, sanskrit saying brahma vit brahma eva bhavati which swami repeats one who knows the brahman brahma vit brahma eva bhavati he will be brahman by himself you know? that's what it is so brahma vit means to know god okay brahma vit kule means your lineage or family you can say you know brahma vit kule is so a kula or a lineage which knows brahman a means opposite a means in the lineage of absence of okay i used the word ab- actually absence of knowledge of brahman i should put a lin- lineage with the absence of knowledge of brahman okay um i can uh... okay so let me put that is a bit more accurate sorry about that so ab brahma vit ab brahma vit kule okay in the lineage of absence of knowledge of brahman you know i hope you understand it's a bit too lengthy and i don't think too many offs are coming but you understand bhavati remains so one who meditates on this rule where the jnana rises and it expands it reaches a sense of equanimity that person will never be in a lineage in a family which does not know god that's what it means so if a person who has meditated on this in any birth yeah i mean until we merge in the lord whenever we are born we will be born among devotees of the lord people who know god people know of god we will be born so that is the advantage of meditating on this u u which is rising and we should say that u when we chant actually it should raise the jnana in us wisdom in us and it will also expand and it will also bring us equanimity so that's the meaning of this so if we can meditate on the lord who 
is present as Taijas or Tejas in our dream state, which is signified by the letter U in Omkara. And by being aware of it and praying and meditating on it, we, our, our knowledge will expand, it will increase, and we will be equanimous, and we will never be born in a lineage, in a family, which does not know God. So that's the meaning of this one. I will go to the next, uh, so the 10th mantra. Sorry, Ram, I don't know. Yes, Santi. What does it mean in the lineage of absence of Brahman? Absence of knowledge of Brahman. I have translated, Aunty, now you know. Brahma with means who know God. Yes. Okay, so so I, I, maybe I'll put in a family, if you want to put in a family which does not know God. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, is this... Uh, because there is a, a, a Brahma. Yes. Okay. Okay, A uh, is negating Brahma with, okay. Sai Brahma, I don't know. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, I have a small doubt. Yes. See, when we are chanting Om, yes. we are concentrating on the, all the three uh, letters that compose it. But yes. what is the meaning of concentrating on U alone and A alone? I don't understand that. So, because of the word which I have used alone here, Eva. No, so, okay. The thing is, I, I think your question is when we say Om, so how do we think of all this? When we are chanting. Um, my understanding is this, that when we chant, our mind is occupied with something. You can say, oh, I am chanting ah, uh, oh, I am chanting ooh, I am chanting um. But once we train our mind, see, for example, when we chant ah, uh, if we can visualize the empty world coming into being, being created, or we can see empty world is vibrating with this ah, uh, so there are different ways you can visualize. Uh, you don't have to say ah in everything, but as soon as you say ah, it, it you should bring to your consciousness that. So it is something like this. He ate an apple. Okay. So I will give a name. I will I will give some name. I will just for the sake of you will say Chandran ate apple. Okay. This is a sentence. When we say it, do we understand what has happened? Okay, a person can. When you say Chandran, you can see the look at the person, remember the person. Eight means you can imagine the person is eating. Uh, apple means you can imagine apple. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Chandran ate apple. Chandran, I think of Chandran. I think of eating. I think of apple. But when you put the sentence together, what is the picture you get? Actually, the picture you get includes all three. So the same way is Om. So one thing is to say, uh, when I say, ah, I think of Chandran. When I say, ooh, I think of eating. <laughs> um means I think of apple. But actually, our visual, when somebody makes a statement, what comes to our picture? Do we have three entities or we have everything put together? You see a person eating the apple, you will see all three together. Same thing with O. Because we should train ourselves to understand what is A. Just the way I know who Chandran is. I know what apple is. I know what eating is. Once we know these three, we put it together and then it becomes one scene. A person eating apple. There are three things involved though. So the same way ah, um, is the same thing. Once we train ourselves and identify, when we say om, 
we will be able to see, see imagine visualize that one thing which is being born which is being expanding and the which is being rested so i think that come with familiarity is my understanding um the whole idea is to identify you know i somebody can make a statement if you give this statement to a small child the child doesn't know anything it doesn't know what it's reading what the word what the means but then you point out this this is this this is uh, apple this is eating so in the in the child puts together but if it doesn't understand the word sentence doesn't mean anything so the same way that's what we are doing here the whole thing is you know there are people who meditate on r for some time this is uh, we chant 21 times we can meditate on different aspects and after some time we put it all together and then it's an integrated vision that's my understanding i hope beautiful explanation thank you so much arno god bless you hi ram sir yes i am arno yes uh, so we we, we... try to visualize the the sound or the letter the sound right i, I think i will i am going to cover it a little later there is one uh, words which i put aunty i will that, that will clear it okay but how Thank what you. is meditation and i think we will go to that okay i i it's a new one which i words i put i will explain this aunty okay sorry about it yes brother asan sairam brother you explain about the shloka that omkaram pintu samjuttam nityam dhyanti yogina kamadam mokshadam saiva omkaraya namo namaha what stands for saiva omkaraya namo namaha i think i have already given the meaning sir cha eva becomes chaiva okay kamadam mokshadam cha means it is and it gives you the karma the wishes of the world it also gives you moksha cha stands and deva means well, indeed this omkara is the one which gives you karma the karma whatever you wish karma the means giver of this omkara is the karma the giver of wishes omkara is the moksha the which gives you moksha so this om can give you two things it gives you whatever you need in this world whatever you need in the other world okay okay Thank that you. omkaraya to that omkara i bow down okay Thank that's the meaning thank you brother thank you sir yes brother vimalesan sir uh, no what, what do you mean uh, you explained but i i didn't get it clearly the exactly what what does it mean by account of bi directionality okay very good anything in the middle is in touch with both sides okay um this ooh, yeah, that, that, that's a direct meaning but here okay. what does it okay so what does it mean so i will explain that see what what is active in the dream state is our mind alone okay this mind can is is in the middle of the created world and the divinity okay so it is a very powerful one okay and that is the one which makes everything in this world active if i am active today if i will sit in one place what makes me get up and do something is my mind it puts a thought and that activates everything in this world but the thing is this mind can go this way or that way it can go towards the world it can go towards liberation okay a is creation um is dissolution merger this who can go this way or that way so we need to know where to go oh, we have okay. already come from creation if you go back it's possible it can go back also it mm-hmm. has op- op- opportunity to go the other way also so that is swami says mind when it is turned towards the world it is bondage mm-hmm. the mind when it is turned towards god is liberation oh, okay yeah. that is what is mentioned by this by direction okay okay thank you okay so this again going to bit philosophy i didn't 
you know, other, you know it, I don't mind answering the question, but I hope um, that's the meaning of this Ubhaya. Otherwise, we will say, why should it say this? A mantra is every, actually, we can dwell on each of the words for a long time, uh, philosophically, because um, this Mandukya Upanishad, uh, very difficult to understand, apparently. So, Shankaracharya's guru is guru. Uh, has written a karika and that itself runs into uh, uh, I mean several uh, verses and Adi Shankaracharya took that and did commentary on that okay so and people studying the commentary of Adi Shankara on this Mandukya karika itself they say that itself is difficult to understand so there is so much meaning in this um, uh, but I hope I have explained to you what my understanding, limited understanding to you is. I hope that helps. Yeah, that, that is a very key point here. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yes, Sister Usha Kapoor, I think you have raised your hand. Uh, brother, can you go back number 10, pronunciation, the complete um, Upanishad, Swapansthan, Stadasya, Okaru Dvitya Matra Utkarsh Dubhe. I just uh, I am broken in here. Right, so. Okay, I will I will go over it. I haven't touched it. Um, I, I promise that I will go through. I will I will go through. So this one, this word Swapnastana Taijasa. Okay, is comprised of two words Swapnastana. And Taijasa. Because of Sandhi, this Visarga, this colon, which looks like colon, becomes is. So it becomes Swapnasthanas Taijasa. Swapnasthanas Taijasa. So this, this Visarga, which is normally pronounced as becomes Swapnasthanas Taijasa. This visarga is actually drops because of this sandhi. That that visarga is actually sometimes dropped also in when it brought together. So it's missing as you can see here. Swapnasthanas taijasa. Ukaraha becomes ukaro because of sandhi again. Ukaro. Dvitiya. I think it should be okay. Ukaro dvitiya, which is what is Ukaro dvitiya. Matra plus Utkarsha becomes A and U becomes O. Akara and Ukaro always become O. Akara, which is long, and Ukaro also becomes O. So it's Matro Utkarsha. Tro, it becomes okay. Tra plus U becomes Tro. So it becomes matrot karshat. Then this it becomes id. I have already said hard consonant becomes a soft consonant. So id. So id plus u becomes du. So matrot karshadu bhayatvat. Okay. Ubhayatvat. Then there's one more sandhi. This it again becomes. This it in this case it becomes. It, okay, and it joins with va. So, ubhayat va va. Okay, this va again with u becomes wo. Okay, so it becomes matrot. Karsha Dubayatva Dva Okay. Vod Karshati. Okay. Matrot Karsha Dubayatva Vod Karshati. So that's why it's uh, so many words put together. Sanskrit always packs the words together into a samasa. Um, you try slowly to chant, um, but I have given the break, the break, break breakdown, so it should be easy for you to understand. Matrot karsha dubayat va vod karshati. 
if any, someone wants to practice, I, you know, I hope sister is good enough for you. Um, any other one you want me to spend? I will just go through the next one. So, so her why? Jnana Santatim, I think that should be pretty straightforward. Samanaha Cha becomes Samanascha. That's again Sandhi, this Visarga becomes Sh. So Samanascha, Samanascha is what you are seeing here. Bhavati, that is simple. Na Asya becomes Nasya. Asya plus Abrahma with Kule becomes Nasya Brahma with Kule. That's what you are seeing here. I hope uh, that's good. Nasya yes. Brahma with Kule. Sairam sister, is it okay? Yes, yes, brother. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's Tanandi. Sairam, brother, uh, I believe in one of your slides, it could be eight or nine, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, all this created world is the imperishable Om. All the past, present, and future is the Om. And also, it stated it's even beyond that, uh, you know, the, the Kala. So, the I thought the, the maybe the time concept past, present, and the future, uh, the, I can understand it would be equivalent to Om, that would be equivalent to Atma and also Brahman. What is the beyond the Kala in the, the you explained? I believe I didn't get that one in the, the, the. Okay, I think I will come to that sister and when I, in the, oh, when the okay. next verse, next verse we will cover that. I, oh, if okay. I don't cover and if the still has a question, please let me know. Okay. Okay. So now we are in Sushupti. Sushupta sthana. Sushupta sthana. Pragnyo makaras tritiya. Makarastritiya Matra Mite Rapi Terva Mite Rapi Terva Minoti Herva Idam Sarva Mapi Tisha Bhavati Ya Evam Veda Sushupta Sthana Sushupta means deep sleep. Shupta means sleep. Sushupta means good sleep. So it means very deep sleep. A good sleep means it's deep sleep. So Sushupta Sthana in that state, the one who is in deep sleep state is pragna is pragna okay he is the embodiment of pragna pragna is consciousness the one whose consciousness is pragna so in deep sleep the same divinity or brahman is present as the one who is consciousness within us and that is depicted by the makara ma syllable Ma sound, ma kara. Tritiya, this is the third matra syllable. The third matra is ma, which indicates the deep, the pragna which is present in the deep sleep state. Okay. So you should understand actually in our waking state, the pragna is there also. The Taijasa is there also, and Vaishwanara is there. In our waking state, all three are present. But the thing is, we were not aware of it because we are so busy with the world. 
we are only thinking of five panera but tigers is there because our thought processes are working sometimes we do daydreaming also so that is tigers and pragna consciousness is still present so these are actually present in the waking state all three are present but it becomes very much easy for us to understand it when we talk about sleep because that's only present at that point and because vaishwana is not present or not experienced taijasa is not experienced but only pragna is experienced in our deep sleep state because that is why after our deep sleep state when we wake up we are refreshed because we are only in communion with god even though we were not aware of that because god is in communion with us in our deep sleep state god is in communion with us not necessarily we making an effort to be in communion that's why when we get up after sleep we are fully refreshed if you ask modern scientists why people go to sleep what is the reason there's no answer because we have to always charge ourselves back through the communion with god that is where we sleep even if we don't know about it god will put us to sleep and he will charge us and he will wake us up that is the uh, significance of sleep which we are not aware every day we are god tells okay now it's time for you to come into communion with us and we go to sleep we think we go to sleep because we are tired because all the energy which god has infused on us the previous night is all worn out so god is now it's back to bed so that i can communi- be in communion with you so it is available as pragna that is why it's called pragnanam brahma that itself is another mahavakya okay so i will ask sister aruna you have a question because you have mentioned that the um stage is a merger too so pragna and merger how that goes together can you please thank you so I, that's what i was explaining sister when you go to sleep your mind is not active your body is not active only the causal presence god in you as consciousness is active if that is not active we will die when we are sleeping our hands are not moving feet are not moving means consciously they are not moving in the waking state which happens in the waking state that is so the body is silent your mind is also silent okay and then we have deep sleep okay but that is an involuntary process because god is making it happen okay if the mind is so active many people have trouble sleeping falling asleep that means the mind it has become a problem but the thing is in spite of that we when we go to sleep without our knowledge we are in communion with god without our knowledge we are in communion with god because we have submitted ourselves to god so that he can work with us in whichever way he wants so that means we have merged with god that's why it's merger that's when yoga yoga i don't know many of you must be doing yoga asanas there's a posture called yoga nidra in yoga nidra consciously you fall asleep you are in a deep sleep you try to practice being in sleep consciously with awareness you still the mind you still the body and practice what's called yoga nidra that is conscious merger with the lord that is when yoga that that practice is there so i hope i made it clear if your mind is completely silent if your body is completely silent inactive then you are merged with god which is which is called realization or mukti jeevan mukta means people jeevan mukta means someone who is active in the world but they are completely aware of their merged state they are always functioning in that merged state with god various techniques which we people use to get to that point 
that is pragna we are actually with pragna normally but we are not aware of it we are not that's called awareness Con constant integrated awareness means knowing all these three are present in us and acting that's called constant integrated awareness i hope uh, yes brother thank you that's a lot to contemplate to understand more <laughs> Then, yeah, we should understand the subject of Om is uh, it's a subject which Subramanya is supposed to have taught Shiva, Lord Shiva. Okay, so you know, we will never fully understand it. See, we may comprehend some of the concepts, but experientially understanding is a lifetime, many lifetime sadhana is my understanding. But we need to know what we should strive towards. I hope uh, it's clear. Yes, thank you very much to the extent possible. Uh, a quick uh, question is the yoga nitra and the savasana is yes. the same? yeah oh, okay okay thank you savasana is yes in what you practice in savasana is called yoga nidra that yoga means to connect see yogasana itself is to connect to the lord uh, and um, so one, the reason it's slightly different topic, but you know you do asana so that you train your you the body will not become an impediment when you want to try. Your body should be healthy, your mind should be healthy. Only then you can uh, merge with the Lord while awake. While being awake, your body should be healthy, mind should be healthy. Means healthy means they are in a state of equilibrium. So asanas is for that. So when you do shavasana, you learn how to bring the body to standstill state. Now that's the idea. Okay, sir. Um, so okay, we have not gone through the meaning. Okay, makara. So shift the deep sleep state, pragna. Makara, it's simple, I swear the word makara. Um. Tritiya, third matra, it's a third matra. Mite, I have used the word translation, which is established. Okay, established means engrossed in it. Mita also means little. Okay, you reduce it, or when you reduce something, that's also called mita. They will say, Swami will say, mita aharam hitam. Mita means having less food is healthy. Okay, mita. Okay. Uh, so, Mita, uh, means established in this case I put. A Pite, because on account of it being, when you end anything, it reduces. The sound also reduces. Everything in the world, when it reduces, it loses itself. It's separate entity. Okay. A Pite means you don't exist as separate entity. On account of it being final, minoti. It, so what it basically means is the pragna is present in deep sleep state. Okay, ya evam veda means one who knows that and concentrate on um will slowly understand that we merge in that. So we will be only supported by. Her why idam sarvam apiti. Everything in this world is supported. Okay. By us meditating on this principle, our life itself will be supported. That means we will only take the support of the Lord. We think nothing in this world is possible. Like when we are sleeping, we have actually handed over to us. We are not consciously sleeping. But who is a Lord who is keeping us alive? Actually, that's complete surrender. But we don't even know that we are surrendering to the Lord when we go to sleep. If we know how to sleep surrendering, when we are awake, so we'll be surrendered to the Lord, whatever happens. When we die, also we will be surrendering to the Lord. That is the idea. So the thing is. But we think we are some doing something we have to know. When every day when we go to sleep, we know that for six to seven to eight, hours we sleep. 
only god is in charge only god not us not anyone else that concept we forget every day we experience but we forget we don't pay attention but by chanting this om we should understand that that the lord is taking care of everything i will be taking his support that's what it is in this world everything is supported by lord like that so just meditating and realizing that will take us somewhere that is the meaning of this i hope uh, it's clear hope to the clear to the extent possible you know to my uh, at least you understand clearly what i understand it may not be everything I hope communicated, but I will go to the next uh, one if it's okay. It's the twelfth one. Yes, special. I think this is uh, also asking what is. I think there were two, three questions. What is beyond time? Um, what is? Uh, um, I think Ante Sakho's answer, I, I think it will be covered. Ante Sakho, you had asked question, maybe I will, please can you, I said I will talk talk about it. Okay, anyway, I will go through the verse. If maybe Ante will ask me the question if I have not answered her question. Amatras Chaturtho Avyavaharya this is Avagraha, I just said, uh, but it's silent normally. Amatras Chaturtho Vyavaharya Prapancho Pashamaha Prapancho Pashamaha Shivodvaita Shivodvaita Eva Momkara At Maiva Aat Maiva Sam Vishatyat Manat Manam Sam Vishatyat Manat Manam Ya Evam Veda Ya Evam Veda Amatraha means that which is without a matra, that which is not even a syllable, which is silent, which comes after Om. Chaturtaha, fourth. The one which is without a syllable comes after Om. Means it's silent, you can't even see what it is. Avyavaharya. Vyavaharya means to be active in this world. Vyavaharam in Tamil say, in Tamil we will say, Vyavahare, I think it's same in Hindi and North Indian languages, means any matter, okay, beyond anything, any uh, thing in this world, okay, Avyavahare. Prapancha, pancha means five, prapancha means these five elements which is present in everything, means that's created world. The world of five elements, prapancha, upashamaha. It is. It does not exist. It's devoid of that, or it has come to rest. You can say. Shiva, it that is Shiva. That which is auspicious, Shiva. That which is joy. All that is embodied by the word Shiva. Lord Shiva embodies all that. That way is always dancing in the burial ground. Everything has to die and people should be resting. Only then he will dance in joy. That is Shiva is always said, cremation ground is dancing. Your mind should go, your body should go. It's all burned to ashes. He jumps up and dances. That is Shiva. That means our mind consciousness goes, Shiva, body consciousness should not go. Only then Shiva will come within us. To find the divinity means, as Swami again and again spoke about, Advaita, non dual state. Dvaita means to duality. Dvaita, Dvaita is duality. Advaita means beyond duality or absence of duality. 
absence of duality is non-dual state. That means only one exists. Evam, thus, Omkara is Om. Atma, Atman, Eva. Sam Vishati. Vishati means to enter. Pravesha, all that comes from the word. Pravesha comes. Okay, Sam Vishati. And I think last week, uh, Brother Vimalaisa reminded me, it's Te Vishanti Parandham in Suprabhata. They enter, they reach. Okay. Sam Vishati, Atmana, by oneself, Atmanam, into the self. So what it basically means, Ya Evam Veda, Ya Evam Veda, whoever this knows this, whoever knows this, as you can see, it is emphasized twice. The one who knows that there is something which is beyond all this created world. This past, present and future is only present in the created world. Once we die, do we have past? Do we know past, present, future? Nothing. When we are sleeping, there is no time. When we awake, we are thinking, oh, yesterday it happened, tomorrow it will happen. Only the mind thinks of that. When the mind goes to rest, there is no such thought. Deep sleep. In deep sleep, are we, do we know anything about present or past or future? Nothing exists. In that state and beyond that, even beyond that state also, is God. Means we can't perceive with our senses. That's what it means. Past, present and future doesn't exist. Once we die, yesterday what happened, tomorrow what happened, no one knows. The person who is dead at least doesn't know. Um, so, what it says is that state, which is completely silent state, is beyond this world of transactions. Okay. And that is joy, random, bliss, and that's all auspiciousness, and that is Shiva. In that state, we are all one. No one else exists in this world. And when we become aware of that in our waking, when we are aware of that, our Atma will merge into the Atma itself. Atmana Atmanam Samvishati. Without any effort, the individual self will merge with self. Complete unity with the divinity. We all talk about unity, divinity and all that. That is that state where we merge in. Because when we know that the Lord is beyond all these differences, understand, we merge in that. And so this actually we chant every day. It's in everything we chant. Why do we now chant Om is we remind ourselves all this before we undertake any activity. Before we sit for bhajan, before we sit for puja. That is why this Om is repeat again and again and again. To remind ourselves that we have to go beyond this created world. This, but even if we are doing something, it is only God who is making us do all this. Without him, we are nothing. He is the only thing. To remind ourselves that we chant Om every time. So if any activity is undertaken with full understanding of Om, that activity can give, never go wrong. Uh, that is the understanding of Om. Um, I hope uh, I have covered to the extent possible. Um, I should go to... Brother, I don't know from this one. Thank I you. didn't hear Sister Ramdi. Uh, I got my answer. You got your answer. Yeah. I hope Sakwant also got her answer. We'll go to Chattari Vakpat Parimita. Okay. We were talking about Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama. Maybe we'll continue. I thought it'll be finished today, but I think I spent too much time. It looks like I'm very sorry. Uh, I don't know whether it was needed or not, uh, but I hope 
Some of them had answered questions, so I answered. I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, then I will discuss this, and I will come back to Chatwari Vakpadani afterwards. Okay. This verse is this is something new which we didn't look at, so I thought maybe let's do something new today. So I'm just going to go through this verse. This verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, I hope you all understand this. Uh, Okay, sorry. Some typing mistake. Okay. So I will just read. So what, okay, I will just give the context. Maybe, you know, people too much. Maybe I will tell a story. Uh, this um, verse comes in the third canto, Skanda, Trithiya Skanda of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is a very big one. I have one thing that I have read it all. You know, I, have, I learned this verse somewhere, so I, I put it here, okay. Um, so this is the verse in, in third canto. Um, there's a story of Kapila, Kapila Maharshi, okay. Uh, Kapila is a rishi who is um, the son of Kardama, sage Kardama or Kardama Prajapati. And Devahuti. Devahuti is the Kardama's wife. Their son is Kapila. It's that Kapila is an avatar of Sri Vishnu. This couple had uh, their daughters are Arundhati, Anasuya, all of them are this couple's daughters. Okay. And um, they, were, they are supposed to have nine daughters. All of them are of some uh, great quality. They depict very great qualities. In Sri Suktam, there's a reference to this Kardama Rishi. Um, but anyway, it's uh, Sri Suktam. I don't know how, if anyone has learned. But uh, so what happens is this Kapila Maharshi is the one who taught the world the Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya Yoga, Swami refers to in the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. That is by this Kapila Maharshi. And this Kapila Maharshi is teaching his mother, Devahuti, all this. Because he is Vishnu Avatara, he is explaining Sankhya Yoga to the mother. As part of that discourse, this verse appears. Okay. This is the third canto, 26th section of the discourse, Adhyaya, you can say. And this is the 33rd line in that. Okay, so I've just picked that up. Actually, that itself talks about many things. But, you know, I just picked one. Too many slokas, but just to give an example. So Kapila Maharshi, which is Vishnu himself, the incarnation of Vishnu, is explaining this sentence. So I will just talk about this. Um, and maybe we'll continue. I hope. I'm very sorry. Um, uh, just an announcement. I will again repeat it. Next Saturday, I hope if you all are okay, to start. Uh, I have some pers personal matter to deal with that day. Um, so if I we can have the class between um, eight and nine, eight and nine thirty, if it's okay. Uh, there won't be any new material. You know, I think I will cover this. It will be a one-hour session if it's okay with you all. I did not want to cancel it. So we will do it between 8 and 9. I hope if anyone has problem, let me know. But whatever we do will be again recorded and uh, put in YouTube. So anyone who can't make that time can watch it. Uh, but please, uh, I hope you all understand. Uh, so it will be, be 8, to 9? 8, 8 to 9 next Saturday. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. So I will just go through this. Arthashrayatvam 
ಅರ್ಥಾಶ್ರಯತ್ವಂ ಶಬ್ದಸ್ಯ ದ್ರಷ್ಟುರ್ಲಿಂಗತ್ವಮೇವ ದ್ರಷ್ಟುರ್ಲಿಂಗತ್ವಮೇವ ಚ ತನ್ಮಾತ್ರತ್ವಂ ತನ್ಮಾತ್ರತ್ವಂ ಚ ನಭಸೋ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಕವಯೋ ವಿದು ಅರ್ಥಾಶ್ರಯತ್ವ ಶಬ್ದ ದ್ರಷ್ಟುರ್ಲಿಂಗತ್ವಮೇವ ತನ್ಮಾತ್ರತ್ವ ನಭಸೋ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಕವಯೋ ವಿದು ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ Okay, that will leave that. We'll just go through the meaning. Artha means meaning. Meaning. Ashrayatvam means it's dependent on something. Meaning is dependent on, okay, on this. Shabdasya. On the sound, of the sound. Drashtuhu means of the seer, the person who knows. Okay. ದ್ರಷ್ಟು ಶಬ್ದ ಅರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರಯತ್ವ ದ್ರಷ್ಟು ಶಬ್ದ ಅರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರಯತ್ವ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ನೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಅರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರಯತ್ವ ಸೊ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೋವರ್ ಲಿಂಗತ್ವ ಲಿಂಗತ್ವ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಬಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ it depicts or marks something for you linga tvam symbolism i put the word symbolism you will come back to it eva means indeed cha and tan matratvam means measure matra means we looked at no syllable it's also measure but there are two things tat matratvam tat means that okay so tat tan matratva becomes because of sandhi this it becomes in so it becomes tan matratva cha is and na bhasa means it ether or space lakshanam lakshan means quality character nature all that is lakshanam kavayah kavi kavi means poetry poet kavayah means many poets but the word kavi in the vedic parlance its use is just normal not a poet who composes poetry kavi means who knows everything so kavi the only person who can be called kavi in this world is god kavi is one who creates everything is also called kavi okay so kavayah means anyone who has reached that state people who already know god are kavya i have just put the word the learned and poets vidhu who they know so i i oh, it's already 10:30 i hope uh, i will just spend 10 minutes doing a quick summary i will continue on this later see the thing is when i speak everyone speaks we only hear what the person speaks but what i speak started with a thought the meaning which i wanted to communicate so the sound actually communicates the meaning the meaning which one cannot see meaning which cannot be seen is expressed through sound and that sound is what is called linga when we see lingam we think shiva lingam is shivalingam god no that depi, that indicates the principle divine principle that is why it's called linga so for example uh, lingam is called genders in some cases pullinga stree linga napamsaka linga linga means a mark okay a, a, a mark which will tell you the uh, some nature of something which is with without uh, beyond your sight okay just to say 
pulling means masculine gender feminine gender means there is something which gives away the identity or the nature of a person okay so uh, in the, in the western parlance you know people have made all sorts of things about shivaling and all they will say it's a male genital organ it will say see the thing is if a, a child is born how do you know the child is male or female you will say oh this based on you uh, something which points out this child is a body part body part will tell oh this is a male child what does a male child means you know the internal uh, female child you will say this is a female child there are many things in a female body which is not known but there is one mark which will tell you it is a female child okay so linga means it's a mark which tells you where divinity is what divinity is it reminds you for example if i say apple is the word apple apple no it indicates a fruit okay the fruit which is not seen is indicated by the word apple okay when so the, when the sound comes that thought a thought about an apple has made me say the word apple okay that thought is para not seen that is the point from which the word itself starts the thought which beyond anything which is only in the space is the start so what this basically says is people who have seen they able to communicate what they have seen but others have not seen through a word which is actually an indication of the meaning of actually a word is only indicating the meaning of that word which exists and which is not seen okay that's what it is so i will stop it here it's 10:33 i already went past then we can discuss about tanmatra which is sensor sensor uh, that's also another topic we can discuss i will stop here if it's okay and if there are questions okay so we will close with uh, prayers sloka samasta sai ram everyone sorry it took a little more to decide om samasta loka sukhino bhavantu समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम शांति 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 साईराम एवरीवन